Okay, another video game episode. I mean, sure, it's been about a month, sounds about right. And that means we finally get to make our comeback, right? Uh, no, Ivan, not not yet. Oh, can I at least stick around and we'll do it back and forth style again? Sure, those are always faster to script anyway, uh, providing you've been following the Cuphead situation, yes? Ah, uh, yeah, we're all over that over here. Okay, well, then by all means, take it away. Roger that. So, Cuphead is this indie game that feels like it's been in development forever that's finally about to come out at the end of the month. Stop me if you've heard this one before from the indie scene, but it's a retro-style, 2D side-scrolling platformer executed in a quirky novel art design. In this case, meticulously recreating the aesthetic sensibilities of 1930s rubber hose-style cartoon animation. Needless to say, I am so damn on board for this. Yeah, me too, so what's the problem? He said, as though he didn't already know. Well, the controversy isn't actually about Cuphead. Everyone is still pretty much on board with Cuphead looking like a potentially really good game, and the early word is still pretty solid. What happened was that a games journalist posted a funny video of himself playing the game at Gamescom in Germany and kind of sucking at it. Kind of a non-story, really. But then some guy with a buttload of social media followers and apparently a surplus of whatever gamer culture credibility means in 2017... Probably nothing good, I assure you. ...made an edit from only all the worst gameplay mistakes from the original video and posted it to make some kind of point about games journalism that I honestly don't grasp the full intent behind. Well, I imagine the point was that being bad at a game is proof that games journalists and the elite mainstream media don't know enough about their own medium and therefore don't deserve as much credibility as the true devoted gaming voices of the populist new media. Which refers to who? Mostly guys shrieking ironically racist obscenities at PUBG and pretending to be frightened by what's basically the Tim and Eric version of Night Trap. Ah. And the writer of this was a 25-year veteran of technology journalism, almost as long as that covering games as well, right? I believe that was the case, yeah. And he doesn't know enough about video games? That would seem to be the insinuation. Because he wasn't good at playing the tutorial of a game that not only he's never played, but that most people haven't played because it's not even out yet? Ah, That's not even a groan. That's a summary of my entire reaction to this. Ah, but hey, your show, what do you think? Well, I'm pretty much right there with you, Ivan. This is a dumb thing. There's hundreds of different types of video games, not everyone's good at all of them, and almost no one is good at any of them the first time. This is just such a stupid thing to decide to treat as a big deal. Though, to be fair, internet geek culture tends to think everything is a big deal, except, you know, things that are actually a big deal. In any case, the whole thing went viral in part because instead of treating this manufactured faux outrage as excuse for cyberbullying with the you're all being dumb, piss off and welcome to my mute button that it deserves, some folks actually tried to have a good faith discussion over the make-believe serious questions supposedly at the heart of it. Do you have to be good at video games to be a good games journalist? Okay, so playing devil's advocate, do you think there's at least some merit? No. 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 Just... No. Game playing and writing competency are not interchangeable skill sets, and you don't need to be a master at something or even particularly good at it in order to cover it from a reporting perspective. What's needed is understanding of the matter, and to suggest otherwise is antithetical to a dozen different practical realities of journalism, in my opinion. Okay, but... And even in this specific case, it's not like the guy said, I can't play this, which means it's badly designed and called it his review. This was literally posted under the pretext of laugh at me being bad at this game. And to the degree that you might argue that it was in some way potentially damaging to the game's reputation or flippant unkindness to the developers, well, I don't agree with that, but the guy already more or less apologized for his tone or whatever, so if that was the hair across your ass, you can probably go ahead and wipe now. Okay, but what if he had been doing a preview or a review? Well, it's pretty safe to assume it wouldn't have been presented in exactly that way because the journal in question is a veteran professional and an adult, so it's kind of a pointless question, isn't it? But you don't think it's a big deal for someone who isn't good at games to be reviewing games? I mean, okay, if the stated angle of the critic and or their outlet is specifically these are reviews by elite, highly skilled game experts, then yes, obviously that's truth in advertising. But otherwise, I'm so much more concerned with their sentence structure and command of narrative grammar and their honesty than whether or not they can no death DMC3 on heaven or hell. Okay, but you're mainly a film critic, right? Would any other discipline decide that it was a good idea to write in the form of a conversation with himself? Uh, come again? Yes, I'm a film critic. So you'd agree that you should probably know about film to write about it, right? I mean, it absolutely helps, but I don't necessarily know that it's the most important thing. Now, if you're writing about film history, an individual film's place in film history, or a comparative review, then yeah, you should be caught up on film history and or have relevant examples for your comparison. But again, I think being good at recognizing 
recognizing and understanding your own reaction to a piece of art and being able to put those feelings compellingly into words is an infinitely more important skill. Plus, knowing about movies is not analogous to being good at video games. That's two different things. And before you ask, same answer. If you're writing about games as an expert, you should be an expert, sure. But otherwise, still entirely context dependent, especially since the whole you have to know X amount to write about Y thing angle tends to be gatekeeping code for I want you to have my background so you're more likely to share my largely already decided on opinions. And I've never had any time for that shit. In fact, these days, I tend to seek out criticism from people who don't share my background and or knowledge base because it's more interesting. I already know what I think. Uh, you know, the whole thing reminds me of when the comic book industry figured out it was easier to make super hardcore fanboys more loyal as customers by publishing stories you could only understand if you'd obsessively memorized every stupid scrap of continuity because it made them feel like having obsessively memorized every stupid scrap of continuity made them the real fans, as opposed to the publishers doing the work of figuring out what an expanded audience would actually look like and might want to purchase, but that's another show. Okay, so film criticism, not really a good parallel for game journalism, is what I'm hearing here. Nah, games journalism is more like sports writing, if it's like anything. I mean, yeah, you need to understand American football to report on the NFL, but you don't really have to have a Super Bowl ring or even have played yourself at all to necessarily be any good at it. And when Hall of Famers do cross over into journalism, it tends to be on the broadcast side, often specializing in color commentary, because these are not the same skills. So what about, like, war reporting? Uh, well, now you're talking about, like, life and death and the ability to communicate and empathize with the experience of having put one's very existence on the line in service of a country or an ideal, and I'm not remotely comfortable comparing any of this to that. Well, all right then. So, are you still looking forward to Cuphead? Of course I'm still looking forward to Cuphead. Cuphead looks terrific, and it's certainly not the game or the developer's fault that the internet shit goblins decided that this was the video to use as this week's transparently fake excuse to beat up on the press. Will you look at reviews? Sure. And I'll tell you what, the reviews I most want to read will be from people who don't automatically know that Metal Slug but it looks like a Fleischer Popeye cartoon is something they're probably going to enjoy. Arcade-style running guns are supposed to be games that you can grasp the mechanics of fairly quickly so that the challenge can come from figuring out how to navigate those mechanics mechanics in different situations, so the non-expert testimony will offer a much better sense of whether or not this is a truly authentic pick-up-and-play experience. How's that for a twist? It's really less of a twist than a denouement as epilogue that I bet a bunch of people saw coming pretty far in advance, but... Well, it's my show, so I say that's the ending. Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B. Chipman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest MovieBob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, MovieBob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future MovieBob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another MovieBob production.